Desmond here from Performance Destination. If you're looking to have your car tuned, whether it's on the dyno or remote, reach out to us and see what we can do for you. We meet the needs on all computer systems. having some 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 cut issues you know i'll ramp it up ramp it up cut 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 uh customer said he put new smart plugs in there so i went to go pull the old plugs out so i, I gapped the new plugs put those in at right gap and then you know it was told it was ready gap but i just tested it at my my biggest feeler gauge on here and it's just it's just wobbling wobbling so that means this is 25 so that means this gap is probably like 30 31 so it's too big for the gap and then um, we're gonna gap it down we're gonna gap it down and then we're gonna see what it do and then we're gonna um make another run and see how how it rips how it pulls but if the gap's too big it's it's not a spark blowout you know there's really no such thing as a spark blowout you know you can't blow the spark out what it is you, you're interrupting the spark you know the spark is gapping the, the spark is coming off from the strap to the center of the tip of the needle and it's trying to it, 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 and it's bridging that gap but whenever you have a lot of boost or you um big turbo or about to make a lot of power you're interrupting the spark so now the car is that that cylinder is not burning the way it needs to because you're interrupting it the spark is still occurring you're just interrupting it so it's not a spark blowout a lot of people think it's spark blowout you can't blow the spark out this, this these are not candles you know it's interrupting the spark um so we're gonna gap it down this way when we boost on it hard it's not gonna interrupt and you know what i'm saying it's gonna be a nice pull um clean always to red line
How's that now? Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. Two thumbs up. This is still Negro. I think I think we're good right where we're at. Yeah, I'm not gonna push any no, more than no, that. We, we good. I think it's good. Yeah. I'm just gonna touch up drivability and yeah. and kind of see what we got else left. And I think we're good. I, I think we're good. Stock bottom in. You can't. You can't ask me. Yeah, stock block. I don't want to push it too hard. Yeah, nah. Good. Keep it. Keep it comfortable, but it's gonna rip. Yeah. So the issues that this particular customer have been having is um starting issues, idle issues, kind of a lot of drivability issues. And he also wanted to get everything cleaned up all the way to red line. Um, kind of went in there and make, started making some changes, um, setting up the correct um, injector data for the injector offset tables, cranking tables, um, fuel the fuel tables, kind of smoothing out where it needs to be at idle, cruising wide open, where we want it to be at. Um, car fires over every single time. Whether it's cold, hot, no matter. Press that button, it fires and catches. So just a few settings that um, that just needed to get kind of ironed out for him. And he's happy with it now. Car's making some good power. 630, 497 for pound of torque. We don't want to make too much good stock block, but I think that's good enough for him. It's not a, a race car or anything like that. So he's wanting something that feels good. But more importantly, the goal was just to make sure the car fires over every single time consistently, drives consistently, the day-to-day -day operations of daily driver. So it feels consistent for him. So um, let's fire it up, test and let's fire it up and let's test it out. Just enjoy this car, you know. Yeah. I was gonna send my new block to the machine shop, but not yet. After Christmas. Want to see what that spark plug looked like? Oh, this one for sure gonna be hot. <laughs> oh great God! I think. It, yeah, this is for sure gonna be hot. I know it's hot. You can feel it like a freaking turkey. Man. Let me see what it looked like, bro. Hold it right there. That looked nice. Go ahead and spin it. Let's go keep spinning it. That looked nice. Mm hmm. Hot? Yeah, it's hot. Here, you take these gloves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because that bad boy burn you up. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And that's what spark plug's supposed to look like. This is the E85.
kind of went through a lot of the stuff, the drivability issues he was having, okay. um, starting, idling. Um, but once I, first of all, when you tune a car and the injected data is wrong, mm -hmm. and once I input the correct injected data, like the whole entire map was off. Okay. So the whole car went like crazy lean. Because when I changed the data. So like idle went lean, cruise went lean, wide open went lean. So like that's why every single pass I did, I had to like do small little step ups. To get because like every time I did it, it was like 12, five, trying to touch 13, don't let off. Rescale it, try to do another one. 12, five, 12, two, let off, put in there. Keep rescaling it, keep rescaling it, keep rescaling it. It does about 11, four, 11, one, one wide AFR, open. wide open, okay. where I wanted to be. If it touched a 10, nine, that's fine. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's a little bit hot in here. So yeah. as like say nighttime, you're cruising, it might see a little bit more cooler air. So it might go like a, like a decimal, like a, like a point. Okay. You know what I'm saying, Richard? But nothing crazy but like i wanted to kind of come in i saw how the, how the boost strategy was mm -hmm. in the duty okay um just the ramping of the duty curve i just kind of like just kind of smoothing it all out okay. and have it come in a little bit more nicer and between that and the fuel and the fuel um adjustment i made and like it just started pulling cleaner and cleaner and cleaner mm -hmm. if this was a built setup on this turbo mm -hmm. i probably easily would do like eight like eight thirty or okay. 830 or 820 or something like okay. that um and it'll probably make a lot of torque they'll probably peak really hard and kind of and probably curve like this on the torque okay um but right now it's curving nice i have it where it kind of falls off a little bit okay because if i kept on if i kept the power band going straight yeah it, it would have it would have just started making too much okay so i kind of like had it come on and kind of let it taper a little bit and the taper makes it makes the power the torque okay this way it's nice and comfortable where it needs to be um and this is axle horsepower mm -hmm. so if you compare an axle mm -hmm. horsepower to like a dyno jet or a dyno jet um, okay. dyno this would be lower than a dyno jet okay so like this is a this is actual real power real number because you can kind of the numbers can kind of get skewed by the tires you have okay the tire pressure you have the straps you have, how 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 loose or how how tight you tighten the okay. straps would, would, would throw off the number. Okay. This is whatever the car makes at the axles. Whatever power spits out, puts down. Okay. So a little like that. But the cool thing also about this is, if we ever get to the point where we want to manipulate a a, a drag run, mm -hmm. we can we can set it up on the dyno where we can um, get up on the two step mm -hmm. or anti lag mm -hmm. and then launch it. And okay. launch it and run through all the gears okay. and you'll start seeing it you'll start going and you'll start seeing it check the logs you'll see everything okay. and we can set it up so say say if this is um whatever amount of time we want to hold it at like okay. i told you before earlier okay. it can manipulate that you know what i'm saying so we can manipulate a, a, a track run. a track okay. run on here as well nice. um i think this is perfect oh, yeah. i wouldn't or any more at it you no, know it i know good. i know a lot of people be like oh it's it's three three away from making the five mark but i, I think this is perfect where it's at yeah. i think even right now it's hot in the shop yeah i think even on like winter season it probably would probably make more because right now it's pretty it's, it's hot. pretty hot in here and so being that hot it's still yeah, it's pretty hot in here so like everything's i tested the idle stuff okay I got turned it off and fired up a bunch of times because I wanted to manipulate like the issues you were having. Mm -hmm. um, even when it cool cool all the way down. Okay. Well, the most it, it it can cool down in this environment. Okay. Um, fire right over it catches, bro. Okay. Like like a lot of the stuff that you said, the issues you're having mm -hmm. was um, injected data makes a huge difference. Okay. That makes a huge difference Plus for. Great trend. Right, but for the open and closing of it, that injected data is everything. If if that is the first thing that is off on a car and a tune, everything else is off. Everything else is off. Okay. So like, the you, you have ID injectors, mm -hmm. so the information is out there to get the correct data yes. to put in there. Um, that's why I showed it to you. Yeah. So you can see like, like it ain't no <laughs> magic trick why a car, you know what I'm saying, start running good and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I'm like, yo, you don't have a this, one? this, this, Come this, on. this, I'm gonna change this yeah. and I'm gonna mess with this and watch, the car's gonna idle, it's gonna fire up, it's gonna catch better, it's gonna everything better. So a lot of the stuff has all been set up and changed. Okay. Um, even though you were coming in pre-existing, mm -hmm. you know, and just 
has changed everything so it could pull clean, pull healthier. And I sounds better. I could tell the clean pull. Right? Oh, it sounds better. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what it sounded like before. Oh, so man. I don't know if it, if whatever it sounded like before, what it's found like now, if there's a difference. But like I know by a lot of cars I tune, mm -hmm. by the way that sound, like I can tell you right now the engine is happening. Yeah. yeah. I can hear it. It's it's a, it's a, it's a nice lateral even smooth yep. flow before yep. it was just that kind of graph look yes before it was like a stutter you had to get in it then it would kind of like oh, put, put, but then it would go to like a 4000 rpm and then it would backfire oh, really you couldn't you couldn't rev it past 4000 really it, it, it would do like a two step at 4000 rpm wow well this i started i started every run today at around like 3100 oh yeah so you know 3100 yeah. but not even just that the cool thing about this dyno mm -hmm. is i can set a two second hold, three second hold, four okay. second hold. So say this was like, well, this you don't have a big turbo. This, no, thing, no. this thing lights up pretty quick. Oh, yeah. But if it was an 80 mil, mm -hmm. I can hold it. I can set up a, a three second hold. It will hold the car on the dyno and hold the engine. The turbo starts building boost. Okay. And after one, two, three, then boom, it lets it go and it rips. So this way, the, it, you're really seeing the potential and not the lag of a big turbo. A turbo. But the same thing, I did a hold on this too. Yeah. I did a two second hold. Mm -hmm. This way, when it gets into it, it's, I'm able to see the power, that not the lag, yeah. more like that. So I'm able to see the power, see where it's at already, just trying to trying to get into that boost transition right away, so I can see the AFRs. Um, a lot of the times on most dynos, they don't have a hold, and then you hit it, and it just boom. Yeah. <laughs> that whole, all of a sudden, now you're doing like a nine second run. Nine second, ten second, whole run. But like this one, I hold it down. Mm -hmm. It really starts loading up the turbo, mm -hmm. and then it counts. It does the count for how long I have to count. And you heard it, yeah. And it just starts singing off. So it was good. Like I had no st every pull I did. Yeah. Not one pull since the changes I made had any stutter in this. Well, you know, except for the time when the plugs. Yes. I did see the plug situation, but before I looked into the plugs, I wanted to make sure there was no limiters or this yeah. blocking me or that setting yeah. or that setting that setting if i start going through everything and everything start looking good yeah. then i'm like all right and, i guarantee you i guarantee you those plugs are not i wasn't wasn't the right gap yeah. and it's and like i said i got told all most people it's not spark blowout so you're like oh you're blowing up the spark mm -hmm. you don't blow the spark out you just you're kind of interrupting the spark okay the spark is jumping from the tip mm -hmm. to the strap okay and you don't blow it out you can't blow it out. Like if you run a lot of boost, run a lot of boost. There's no blowing it out. The, 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 the electricity is, is still there. Yeah. It's just it, it's it's just interrupting the the, the, the gap, the, the jump. Okay. So whenever you lower the gap, it's easier for it to jump from one tip to the other because right. it's a shorter distance. Shorter distance. Of a big distance, it's harder, yeah. and then that air coming through and it interrupts it. It's trying to go there, mm -hmm. and the air is hitting it. But the gap is stronger, mm -hmm. it just stays stronger, and no matter what kind of air coming through, how much boost coming through, yeah. it still stays Because it has that much less to travel. Right. So yeah. like I said, that's reset, really and once I did once I did that, I made my first test run, mm -hmm. and I stopped, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. I and I saw it. the climb, and I said like, mid fives on the climb, <laughs> I was like, it didn't even roll over yet. I'm like, yeah, it's gonna be six plus. Yeah. So, and and that's, that's a good number for a stock block. Yeah, I this mean, right now is great yeah, on stock block. Yeah. Like how it is, especially on a hub, hub dyno, mm -hmm. that's like great numbers. That means on a built block, mm -hmm more comp like more compression on the piston mm -hmm. um even if you stay with the same turbo or a bigger turbo like this thing is gonna like sing. it's gonna, it's gonna sing yeah that's next december yeah, maybe next sing. year you yeah. have the build block yeah it's gonna back. sing if you put a, if you put a good compression ratio piston in mm -hmm. there and i'm not talking about no 11 or high 10. i do put, nine to one or eight to one that's perfect yeah if you put that in there because mm -hmm. then it's gonna it's gonna come on because that's what i want I yeah want it, i want it to be built then i have this well you're gonna be the tuner <laughs> I like it. Yeah, but it looks good though, bro. Yeah. It looks good. Um, I'm gonna un, I'm gonna unload. Well, how much boost? How much pounds of boost was this one? At this um, this one was about twenty five. Okay. Twenty five. The thing is, how I do it, even though it hits a twenty five, I'm not letting it like go trying on. to go all the way straight through. Yeah. I'll let it come in and see how the power band comes okay. on, and, and then like I kind of let it start tapering out a little okay. bit or whatever like that. But like, if I let it come on and and it's keep and keep going. Mm -hmm. Then it's just going to keep making more power. It's yeah. going to make more torque. It's going to make more horsepower. And it's not built for that, right? So I'm trying to keep the torque minimum. Okay. So the rods can last. Okay. Um, don't get me wrong. I know a lot of people who do stop blocks and they be like, "Oh, I did a thousand. I did nine hundred, or like that." You know, it, 
that's that everybody has their own goals yes your goal may not be that no if your goal is even if your goal came in you said 500 i would have put it to 500 mm -hmm. so, or, or try to pull yeah. it down to wherever you want it it's yeah. never about my goals yeah i'm trying to make internet numbers internet hype it's about where the customer wants when you pull off here and you go home <laughs> you leave and you drive back home with a smile okay that's yeah. that's, that's what it matters though smile and you know stay troopers behind me <laughs> i'm just saying all right well, let, me, let me unload this thank you Customer came in today with his beautiful setup. New customer, um, local guy. Um, something a little different. It's a stock block 1J and his MK3 Supra. Um, built head, precision 6266 turbo, cams, valve springs, E85. It's on a Haltech um, Elite ECU with the Nexus software, um, ID injectors. This car ran, when we finished, this car ran so strong, so good. So he came in, he reached out to me um, last week and he wanted to get things ironed out, idling, drivability, cold start, hot start, a lot of the stuff like that he wanted to kind of go through and iron out, stuff like that. So I kind of went through everything step by step, iron all his issues out, iron all his bugs out, kind of went through this. It's the, the first thing I, that stood out to me was the injector data being wrong. So is when the injector data is wrong, um, you're gonna have hot start issues, cold start issues, drivability stuff, Wide open, not so much, you know, because the fuel is already spraying, you know what I'm saying, I, I wide open. But you can have a more precise quality idle ride fueling when you have the correct dead times in there. As soon as I input the correct dead time um, settings he had in there, the whole entire car went lean. Idle went lean, um, cruising went lean, wide open went lean. Like I had to like work the idle, work the transition, work the transition, work the transition, make kind of like soft pulls up and down, up and down, so I could work it up, work it up. And then when I saw the AFRs is where I wanted to be at, then I let it eat. I just let it all the way straight through eat, you know. Um, his goal was about the 600-ish, you know, um, 600, 620, 6, around that range. But by the time the last pull we did before the final one, it was about 617, and I told him the car went a little rich. Once I pulled out some fuel and I cleaned out, I cleaned up the, um, the boost duty, uh, what's it called, graph. So the boost duty for how I wanted my RPM, then I clean up the transition. I shape the transition nice and smooth, and actually resembles, reflects kind of what the power band looks like. The fuel map looks like what the power band looks like, and then the boost duty curve looks like what the power band looks like. And then just off of a, a little minor transitions and also a minor fueling 
from after making all the main, the main adjustments, this car went from 617 to 630 without a breeze. Like, and we were, we're still less than 30 pounds of boost. I think that last run was 25 or so pounds of boost. Um, this turbo comes on hard. Like, it has like no lag. We went out on the street, we hit it. We we're going, to, we're cruising in second gear. And I tell him, go ahead, hit it. Like, it instantly, the whole chassis lifts up and the tires just roast. Like, it, it takes off so hard. The engine sounds so good. Like, I'm so happy because he is happy. Like, him coming to me saying, you know what, man, this is the best my car sound. This is the best. It, 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 I've heard it sound. It sounds healthy. It sounds good. Like, that is what I do. That's what I want to aim for. You know, it doesn't matter if this car was making... 600 horsepower 700 horsepower it's the same thing across the board he wanted something nice and clean and that's what i wanted to give to him if you too would like to work with us whether it's your 2j 1j um your rb skyline evo 4z63 4b11 um we tune many computer systems hall tech fuel tech um stock ecu stuff ecu master link ecu standalones we tune a big variety of computer systems. We will meet the needs for you. You can reach me at 941-268-7493, or you can catch me on all platforms of social media at Performance Destination. We have hub dynos in-house, we have all-wheel drive dyno in-house, or even if you need me to come to you, we also do travel tune services. Reach out to us and let's see what we can do for you. Thank you for watching, until next time.